Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the video. We have the Traxxas Sledge on the bench today and this video guys is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be pretty in depth. It might be a little bit longer than usual, but what I want to do is go over my sledge from start to finish. We're going to talk about what it was like out of the box. We're going to talk about all the mods I've done, the progression of the parts and why I updated the parts that I did. We are also going to be talking about one part in particular that is an absolute must-have upgrade no matter who you are and then go over everything else that i've done a lot of these parts in my opinion are must-have upgrades but for some people they might not be and i'm going to try to guys cover that in a little bit of detail so that again there's guys out there who i know can go into a store buy an rtr truck and be very happy with it and there's nothing wrong with that and to be honest i'm kind of jealous of that but then i know there's guys like me that for multiple reasons, guys. One, we enjoy modding. We enjoy watching a truck, you know, become even more powerful, handle better, all that kind of stuff. But also, when parts start to fail, we don't want to keep going back and fixing that same part. We don't want to be going in and buying a $10 ring gear or whatever it costs just to have it go two or three runs later. We want to fix it and we want to get to the truck to the point that when we throw a battery in it, and we head out no matter what we do, whether we're just bashing around a parking lot, whether we're launching it off a ramp, whether we're doing anything, we want the truck to perform. And that is how, guys, this truck is now. And it's about to get even crazier. So without further ado, let's get into the sledge. All right, there's going to be a link, guys, in the description to a playlist of all the videos guys have done on this sledge. From when I first got it to running with different motors, different ESCs, even the video where the Gen 2 Max 8 went up in smoke. Uh, running this truck on paddles, everything. And what I want to cover first is when I got this truck. So when I got the truck, I got it out of the box and I immediately changed the ESC and motor. Traxxas motors are fine. I am not a fan of the VXL. So the VXL 6S, 8S, and the 4S. It has nothing to do with the amount of power the ESC has. It has to do with just how it's delivered braking, all that stuff. And it really comes out, I find, when I'm driving the truck and I want to start jumping it, I just don't like the feel. And I can say that, guys, because I can throw a Max 8, a Max uh, 6, a Mama Monster X uh, 8S, and I can run any one of those ESCs, and with very little tuning, uh, when it comes to the Mama Monster X 8S, which is in this, absolutely nothing, the truck is exactly the way I want, and it feels the way I want. VXL 6S, 8S does not do that for me. So again, it has nothing to do with the overall power, even though if you do, uh, if you change up to a bigger EC guy, especially something like the Mama Monster XS, you will see an increase in performance. Even if you're still running the same motor, even if you're still running just 6S, you will notice just the power changes a little bit. It's not night and day. You're not going to gain 10 miles an hour or anything like that. But again, just the delivery, it does change and it will definitely guys feel more powerful and probably is more powerful. Now, running this truck with the Momo Monster X8S and the 2200 KV was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the power. I pulled that out to put in the Max 8 Gen 2 just to see how that was going to be because a lot of people were showing videos about how amazing it was in the sledge. And for me, I didn't find that. It didn't feel any, it was no different than running the Castle 2200 KV. And again, that ESC guys eventually went up in smoke in this truck after a bit of a not a, I don't I hate to say rough landing because that makes it sound like it bad it wasn't it was a not a perfect landing but it was by no means bad so I went back to the Mama Monster X8S and the 2200 KV now during that time I've done a lot of mods I changed a lot of things now the truck sits with a 1650 which is absolutely friggin amazing and again, as I probably already mentioned, guys, this truck went from something that I was ready just to give up on. I was ready just to be like, you know what? I need to cut my losses now and just get rid of it to a truck that is my absolute favorite. Enough that I've sold my Creighton 6S EXB. Uh, and not for a lot of money either, guys. I'm selling it as a roller. Uh, I just, I don't need it anymore. The sledge the modified sledge has taken over as my king of bashers. But what I want to do, guys, and I know I'm going to get off topic because I have a tendency to do that all the time, is I want to start now with the upgrades. And I'm going to cover the first major upgrade that you 100% have to do. 
I don't care who you are. I don't care how hard you run a truck. You need to do this, and I'm going to show you why. All right, so it's a little bit hard to show this, and luckily, guys, that's kind of the reason why this is such an important part. The shock towers on the sledge, the stock towers, the 6061 towers are garbage. The reason they're garbage, and it really, guys, is apparent back here on the rear, and I'll kind of show you guys a little bit of what I'm talking about. There is so much that goes through the rear tower on a sledge. The wing mount, wheelie bar, shocks, the body mount itself, guys, as well, all goes through the rear shock tower. There's so many screws. And it's even, guys, more apparent when you change to something like the stainless steel because the stainless steel with the black in the background really, really shows it. And Traxxas themselves, they when they released this truck, they had a bunch of fun colors. And I saw people upgrading their rear shock towers to the 6061. And I just remember thinking, like, why? Why are you doing this? You are spending money on a part that is going to bend because it will bend. I bent mine... I don't even know when I bent it. I hardly had any major crashes. And all of a sudden I noticed my wing one day was all cockeyed. And I was like, oh, I bent the rear shock tower. And Traxxas has fixed that though. They now offer a upgrade 7075 rear shock tower because they realized that the 6061 was not going to cut it. However, for less money, and in my opinion, guys, a better looking part, you can go on eBay Type in the Basher Queen. I'll leave a link, guys, to her uh, eBay page in the description. You can pick up her carbon fiber shock towers. And I'm going to show you guys something in this video right now, actually, that shows how strong carbon fiber is. Because I, guys, honestly was always under the impression when it came to carbon fiber, you know, carbon fiber is light. It's great for on-road on -road builds and that kind of stuff. Maybe very light off-road. I never thought of carbon fiber as very strong. Now let's face it, if you're a car person, you watch car videos, you'll see these cars getting built with, you know, monocoque carbon fiber chassis and stuff like that. And you start to think to yourself, okay, obviously these people are onto something. But this carbon fiber shock tower, guys, this rear one is broken. I did a hardcore crash one time and I broke it. Except I want to show you guys how it's broken right now so that you can understand how strong carbon fiber really is. All right, so this wasn't easy to do just given the location, guys, that it's in. It's kind of dark no matter what I kind of do to put lights on it. I can't show it as much as I'd like. But as you can see right here, okay, you can see the outside layer of the tower is broke. It's cracked. And on this side, guys, I can't really show it just because of the way the wheelie bar and stuff mounts. There's a small crack in the carbon fiber there. So it's kind of like each outer layers has a crack in it. Now, at that point, I was like, oh, man, this is going to fail. It's going to completely break. If you go on eBay, and again, you're looking up the Basher Queen, she has a fantastic one-year warranty on all of her parts. I don't remember the exact details right now, but I think it's like a dollar plus shipping or something like that, and you get a replacement part. Now, I did that because I assumed that I am probably going to have to replace the shock tower right away because, again, it's going to fail. I ordered the tower, but I went back out and drove the truck. And I was kind of light on it first because I was like, oh, I don't want to, you know, destroy the rear shock tower and end my fun. But as usual, I started just getting into it, started jumping it. And I don't know how many runs later, that shock tower is still fine. So where aluminum will bend, and then you end up, guys, like I said, with your wing is all kind of cockeyed and stuff like that. That was not the case here. The tower itself is still good. I have the replacement tower. Probably when I do the rebuild that I'm going to be doing next, guys, I probably will replace it because I have it. But the carbon fiber itself is still good. It's The tower, guys, is still holding up. Everything is still bolted into it. I can launch the truck. I can beat on the truck. I can jump the truck, and all is good. So that is why, in my... No, that is why, not just in my opinion, you need to buy the Basher Queen carbon fiber shock towers. If you're buying a sledge, order your sledge and then go out and also get the towers. I do know that she's been kind of on a bit of a, kind of not want to say cross country kind of trip type thing, but I know she's getting her parts now in more store, which are absolutely awesome because again, I think I've said it now like 75 times, you need those towers. And once you replace the towers, guys, it takes a lot to break them. Again, I had a very bad landing. I came completely down on the back the wheelie bar, everything kind of bent up and stuff like that. I think I actually had broke the wing mount itself under here. I had to replace this piece. And again, I did crack those outer layers of the tower. 
but yet the tower is still good and I'm still beating on it. I'm still driving it. I'm still launching it. And hey, the truck is still together. Now, since we've covered something that you 100% have to upgrade, I'm going to talk about something that you don't have to upgrade, which I see a lot of people do. And it kind of surprises me. The stock tires. I am usually, guys, very disappointed with Traxxas tires. They usually come unglued. They usually split. Every X-Max I've ever owned, I've had to replace them within the first 20 minutes of running because they either come unglued or they split. The sledgehammers, though, on the other hand, I've now had the 8S version. I had a version on my Max V2, and I had a version, guys, on my Haas. And all three of those sets have been awesome. And in my opinion, guys, these tires work great on this truck. The tread pattern is awesome. They've survived, again, running a 1650 kV. I've had to, there's been no gluing issues, guys, whatsoever. No tears, nothing. So I often see people buy a sledge and I'll see people, you know, comment saying, oh, you got to upgrade the tires right away. In my opinion, you're wasting your money. These tires look great. They perform well. They just have been, guys, an, an overall great off-road tire. I always kind of will come back to tires like the Copperhead 2s, which are on Arma Cratons and stuff like that as being one of the awesome one of the best tires you can get because they're not overly heavy, but they provide a lot of traction. And in my opinion, guys, the sledgehammers do the exact same thing. So again, if you're buying a sledge and you're seeing this video and you're thinking, okay, I want to upgrade some of those parts. I want to change up some things. Don't worry about changing your tires right away. You may want something more on road. You may want something that's less grippy at some point. However, general bashing, you're going to be happy with the sledge tires. And what I also want to do now, guys, is cover a couple of the parts that I did just completely for cosmetic looks i wanted something you know just to give it kind of a little bit of my own character all that kind of stuff the arms so obviously i have the orange arms and the orange wing those are made out of the same material as the stock arms the stock wing you're not going to gain any strength or anything like that i just did it guys because i wanted to change a bit of the look around back here guys on the shocks i've got the aluminum shock caps and the threaded collars now i could argue that having the metal cap is a little bit more durable of course being a metal cap but i didn't have any issues guys with the stock caps again i just wanted to change the look a little bit i wanted to have i i, I prefer a fully kind of aluminum body the aluminum cap with the threaded collar look when it comes to the shocks that is why the only reason i change those all right now what i want to do guys is get into some of the more nitty-gritty parts so some of the parts that probably when you're looking at the truck really stand out obviously esc motor servo we'll cover the chassis a little bit later but I guys have an OMG 40 ounce servo. Now the stock servo has torque, but it's extremely, extremely slow. And if you are used to something being a little bit quicker, if you're used to something where you can kind of throw the truck around faster, that's how I drive. The stock servo just didn't cut it. Now there are advantages to having a high torque, slow servo. And I'm going to quickly explain that. Having the high torque obviously, guys, turns the tires, you know, whether you're on gravel or what you're on. But at the same time, they do hold your truck straight from, you know, just referring to the servo part of it. Your driving obviously is what will keep your truck straight as well. But when you have a weak servo, the servo itself won't have the torque to kind of hold this arm and hold everything, guys, straight. The stock servo did that. It held things straight. And when you're trying to line up a jump or you're trying to line up a certain kind of line that you want to drive on, not having a fast servo helps. Now I understand guys, there's a lot of settings you can change. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna get into that. But again, the stock servo did have torque. It was just very slow. And I have other trucks, pretty much guys, almost every truck I have, all they all have upgraded servos. When I was driving the sledge with that servo, I just didn't enjoy it. I found it too slow. So I, again, upgraded to this OMG 40 ounce and everything works awesome. It's waterproof, all that good stuff. Now I want to cover guys, the motor mount, the motor and the ESC. The stock sledge comes with kind of that sort of, I don't want to say fixed motor mount, but it uses the pins and you're kind of left letting Traxxas get your mesh. And unfortunately guys, if it's too tight, that can create a lot of problems. Now I had chipped, I think the stock spur first ruined the pinion stock pinion next but i think when that went it actually took the upgraded uh, gpm spur that i had with it so i kind of ruined both 
I then went back, or I went, sorry guys, to a hot racing spur, which is a little bit wider. And I can't remember guys, maybe Robinson Racing. I'm not 100% sure guys on the pinion, but again, not a Traxxas pinion and, and spur, as well as guys, the KC RC motor mount. Having those three things, so having an adjustable motor mount, a good quality spur and a good quali quality pinion has saved my gears. I have no more issues guys with the pinion and the spur. It all works out. Now, when it comes to the KC RC motor mount, it uses this clamp design, which guys, in my opinion is the best because you got your weight, you know, it's kind of centered throughout the motor, I guess you can say just the way it is. It's not just one clamp, it's got the two. So I find this is the best setup for a sledge. It still keeps your motor where it was. This is the 1650 can. It clears the bell cranks and all that kind of stuff. Cause again, you can adjust it guys a little bit. You're not fixed at the front. So when you have the usual kind of motor mount that would let's say bolt in right here, you don't have any ability to kind of move the motor this way. So with the KC mount, you're allowed to adjust for your mesh, but also adjust a bit for the motor. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't gonna allow you to throw some big long can. I'm pretty sure guys, my 1730 would not fit in there. I think that's a 4092. That won't fit in here, but I mean, it might. I haven't tried it yet, guys. But that's why I really, really like this KC RC motor mount because it allows me to do a lot with the motor and how I wanna mount it. Why? I'm kind of putting a lot of emphasis on that is that one thing I did different with this truck and it kind of goes against what I just kind of was talking about by, by uh, getting the perfect mesh is underneath it, I have those. Those are the hot racing motor inserts. They are designed to be used with the stock mount and different pinion gear setups. I chose to buy all of them because I thought even though I did not have guys any issues with the motor slipping or anything or the motor mount guys slipping or anything like that or sliding out, I just thought having something like these little inserts in here would be even more uh, stronger and just prevent the actual mount itself from sliding. So that's why I picked those up. And I thought by picking up all four, which allows me to have kind of eight different setups, I would be able to find the perfect mesh. And in my opinion, guys, when I did it, I didn't. So this guys is, in my opinion, what I always thought would have been loose. I'll kind of see if I can bring you guys in there a little bit closer to show you. I, when I went through all the inserts and I was trying, obviously there's only one or two that really it could work and I could flip them back and forth. I found this really loose. Now, metal spur, metal pinion, they are gonna heat up and they will expand a little bit. And the one thing I've never done since I've ran this truck guys is actually seen what the mesh is like after it's ran for let's say 10 or 15 minutes and everything's kind of warmed up. But I, I really do guys find this loose. But I was really curious to see how it was gonna perform. I was, I was curious to see if I was gonna have any issues. And I have been out guys now, probably five, six, seven, probably more, running this truck, running the 1650, putting down good power. I've had no issues guys. My gears look awesome. Besides from a little bit of rust and all that kind of fun stuff. But there, guys, there's even actually kind of a better angle. I, I, if I saw somebody posting this, I would have said, hey, that's too loose. You're going to want to snug it up a bit. Yet, in this truck, running the 1650, I've had no issues. So it's kind of hard for me now when I go back to my gearing and other vehicles, I've actually started kind of backing things off a little bit. And I've been leaving things a little bit looser. And I've been having zero issues with those vehicles. They run great. I'm not breaking teeth or anything like that. And my temps are actually, I don't know if they're down, but again, when you have a really tight mesh, you'll actually guys bring heat up on things. I often watch videos where somebody gets a new vehicle and they, you know, an RTR, let's say, and they go out and they start running it and they can kind of complain about the heat of the motor. They kind of, you know, I've heard people even say like, it feels like a truck has a drag brake. A lot of time that's because this is too tight. And when Traxxas has their setup with the pins, Unfortunately, it makes it harder to adjust to get that gear mesh right. Having the KC RC motor mount, 100% does. It fixes that issue. You can set it up exactly the way you want. Now, this next part, guys, is kind of funny in the sense that on one side, I'm going to tell you that, hey, if you're happy with stock electronics, if you are happy with a VXL 6S and the stock motor, hey, right on. It is a fast setup. I'm just not a fan of the ESC. But for me, guys, this truck woke up and it went from being a you know a good looking truck sitting on the bench that I enjoyed driving to the truck that replaced my Creighton 6S EXP 
And anybody that's on this channel, that's a subscriber that watches the videos, you know I've referred to that truck, guys, as the GOAT. It, you know, at one time, if I had to take everything out of this room and only have one truck sitting in here, it would have been the Creighton 6S. But this combo, and again, guys, I run that truck with a Max 6 and a 1730 KV, so it rips. But now, with this combo, the Sledge is my goat. It is my favorite truck. It is the truck that I don't think I could live without because it just does. And, and I'm going to finish guys the video going over, you know, a quick little list on why, but the 1650 is just a beast. The power is extremely linear. So unlike a hobby wing max series, so the max six and a max eight, where you really kind of got to adjust the punch and kind of fine tune the punch, the castle system, again, especially guys with the 1650 is just very linear meaning you can drive it, you know, quarter throttle, half, do whatever you want to do. But when you want that blistering punch, you want to just launch the truck. You just want it to get squirmy and be stupid. This ESC running the stock settings as much as, like I'm obviously, guys, I don't remember motor rotation and all this stuff, but I'm saying I have not touched, touched the power delivery, the, the band, none of that stuff is perfect stock it the default settings guys that linear curve where it's just you know shoop, straight up is awesome and i cannot say enough good things guys about this combo the esc the mama monster x 8s is a beast this is the same esc that's pretty much guys the size of your average eight scale that will also run an 800 kv setup so when this the castle mama monster x 8s first came out i think it was coming out guys with the 800 kv and you could dump that in a crate in 8s run it on 8s and have a lot of fun so running this esc in this truck with the 1650 is perfect and it allows you to even use a 6s high voltage pack so castle does not like high voltage cells at the peak voltage so running a 8s high voltage on this esc is bad because the voltage jumps out of what castle is saying is good and your usual kind of max voltage being that this is a 8s esc running on 6s you can also guys run those high voltage packs so you get a little bit more power for the first whatever few minutes which i like as well because i do run a couple of those packs to finish off guys gold okay this right here this big fan guys is on here i got this from kcrc the only reason i'm running guys this big fan is i had broke a blade on the stock fan and at the time i did not have a replacement so that's why i run this it works awesome so i'm not changing it but again guys this is gold mama monster x8s kcrc motor mount 23 tooth pinion running uh, i think it's a 52 spur uh in the 1650 kv awesome it's it is an amazing upgrade it is such a great way to spend money now one of my favorite parts to upgrade on this truck was the chassis i went guys with the vitavon 7075 chassis and the reason i did that was i wanted to keep the weight down on the truck because i knew i was going to be putting parts on later that were going to add weight back so by running the vitavon it is a 7075 so you're gaining the strength of the 7075 but it still retains, I think it's three point something millimeters, just, you know, it's just over three millimeters. So you've got the strength of the 7075, but you're not gaining a ton of weight. And again, that was very, guys, important to me. One thing I also, guys, that kind of drew me into the Vitavon was the fact that it is an exact replica of the stock chassis. So you can see, guys, like right here, where everything still kind of lines up. You can still retain, guys, use all your stock parts. You're not removing plastic on the skids or anything like that. Uh, it has all, guys, the proper holes drilled. There were some companies, guys, that rushed out their first kind of version of their chassis. They were missing holes. It was pretty sad. And that's something, guys, I don't, I didn't want to go through. I thought that was absolutely ridiculous. So the Vitavon chassis, it came out a little bit later. It wasn't, you know, one of the first chassis that were released for the sledge. But in my opinion, it is one of the best, or if not the best, because it looks amazing. You gain that 7075. It retains all the dimensions and all the proper lines, guys, of the stock chassis. So, yeah, in my opinion, guys, Vitavon chassis is a huge thumbs up. And am I going to say it is a must-have upgrade? No, because that really, guys, depends on how hard you drive your truck. Even guys, my stock chassis had a very small bend in it to the point that everything was still kind of lining up pretty much guys like 99% perfect. It was the, the bracing that the sledge come with 
comes with is very, very well. They've done it very, very well. I chose guys to change this because one, I just wanted the look of the chassis, but two, let's face it, having a good quality chassis that everything bolts into is always going to benefit the truck. And because this chassis, guys, again, I know I've mentioned it multiple times now, but because this chassis didn't add a ton of weight, but I gained the 7075, in my opinion, it was kind of a no-brainer. One minor thing I want to mention about the sledge is that it does not come with a rear wheelie bar, which is kind of stupid in my opinion, guys. A lot of trucks come with wheelie bars. This is obviously, guys, the Traxxas one. It works great because it's also a handle. I have not broke it. I have not bent it. It's been perfect. So in my opinion, guys, that's, I don't want to say it go to as far as to say it's a must-have upgrade, but wheelie bars do help with obviously controlling wheelies. They can kind of help with landings. They and then with the Traxxas one, guys, it works as a perfect handle. So, again, I would pick this up. I think now they have different colors and stuff like that available for it. I went with the black because I already had the orange arms and the orange wing, and I just didn't want the back of my truck to look like a giant orange. Now, one of the things, guys, I've done, and this was not a part, was I kind of removed the stock Traxxas clamp battery setup because I couldn't put any of my really good batteries in the truck. I had these straps kind of kicking around. I probably only need two. So I removed, guys, those ends. I removed the clamp, and I just used, guys, these Velcro straps. I took, obviously, the uh, battery tray out, routed them in, and it's been awesome. I have no issues, guys, with losing batteries, and I can use any size battery. I do have the upgraded machined ring and pinion gears in both the front and the rear differential. I needed to change those because I ended up destroying a few tooth on the rear while running the truck with the 2200 kV motor. So not the big beefy 1650, but the 2200 kV. And that is where guys, I get very annoyed. And it, I'm gonna explain why. The sledge is a premium truck. It's a very expensive truck. It's more money than the other trucks. You've got to buy it as an RTR. You've got to buy it with the ESC, the stock motor, stock radio gear, stock servo. And what really sucks about that is, is that you're not getting quality eight scale electronics. So I often think guys of something like, let's say my Arma fire team that came with the Firma 150, the 2050 KV motor, that servo, that stuff is pretty good electronics. That's a good ESC. It's a good motor. The servo is okay. You can use that in other vehicles. When it comes to the Traxxas, especially guys, again, the VXL 6S, I wouldn't put that in something that my daughter or son drives. So it's a, in my opinion, guys, it's where it makes this truck very expensive. And because of all that, this truck out of the box should be 6S ready to bash with no issues. I can often let things like a pinion and spur slip because of the fact, hey, they're right on the motor. The pinion is right there on the motor. The power, the torque, everything is, is instant. There's no drivetrain loss. Same with the spur, it's right next to the pinion. So if those go, you know what? I'm okay with it. I mean, I would rather them not. I think about vehicles like my Corellis or my Armas, and I don't have those issues. I've always had them with the Traxxas vehicles, but again, I can live with them. Being that this truck is so expensive, I should not have to replace parts to run the truck on its recommended power. This is a 6S truck. I should be able to take this thing out, bash it on 6S, and have no issues. Hey, if I take a bad landing and I bend a drive shaft, I break an arm, oh well, that happens. And the Traxxas machined ring and pinions are not cheap. So to have to buy those parts separately, pull the truck apart, install them to keep the truck running on 6S was not cool in my opinion, guys. And a truck at the price of the sledge should have had those ring and pinions or at least something of a better quality. I refer to guys, the carbon fiber shock tower, the rear, the rear carbon fiber shock tower as a must have part. And you know what, in my opinion, the ring and pinion are also, because if I can break one, if I can chip a few teeth, just ripping it around with the 2200 KV, other people are gonna do it too, and other people already have. So that is where this truck guys really kind of gets to me because a lot of the stuff I've done and modifications I've made to it are a lot to do with my preference. They're to my driving style. They're to what I want to get out of the truck. But when you have something like the ring and pinion fail running, you know, your stock kind of somewhat of a stock setup, the, the 2200 KV guys, if anything had 
less torque than the stock uh, 2000 or 2050 that was in the truck, that should never have happened. All right, guys, there it is, my journey with the Traxxas Sledge. Obviously, guys, a lot of bad times, a lot of good times, but overall, where the truck sits now is absolutely amazing. It checks off all the boxes, guys, from performance to durability to handling to looks, everything. When you put it all together, it just does everything really, really well. I am looking forward, guys, to doing the next part of this truck. So the next set of upgrades, which is quite a bit of Vitavon stuff. Most of those parts, guys, were kind of bought because I screwed up on buying a very cheap part. However, I have had some issues, guys, with the stock Traxxas CVs. Those are being replaced. As well as, I've mentioned this, guys, in many videos, I cannot, uh, no matter what I do, keep this bolt in the steering knuckle. I don't know why. It just, every time I come home, it's missing a screw. Oddly enough, most of the time, the truck survives and it keeps running. But I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. So having, guys, the aluminum upgrades, I'm going to be able to Loctite everything in place. That should be awesome. I'm hoping that the weight doesn't affect anything. I can obviously, guys, spare a little bit of my power and speed and performance, but I would, I, I'm would i not looking, guys, to lose a lot. So with adding those parts, I'll be adding a little bit of weight, but hopefully, guys, it doesn't affect the overall performance and, and the fun that this truck is. I would rather, um, you know, I would rather, guys, have it be the way it is now and deal with the odd broken CV even though, yeah, this screw is getting really, really annoying, then adding weight that's going to compromise the truck's performance and all that stuff. So I won't know that, guys, until I get all the parts on and get it out and start running it. But thank you so much for watching. I hope the people that have watched this video and found it interesting, hey, please let me know in the comments. I hope you guys watched it from start to finish because I tried to cover everything. I get asked so many questions about the sledge and parts that I've done, and it's kind of hard, guys, to answer every comment. Obviously, guys, this is not a business. I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I'm not a review channel. This is a hobby. This is just a hobbyist channel. I vlog on my experience with our season. That's it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and have a great day.